Hello everyone. In the last video we looked at Lorentz transformations of two four vectors, the four current and the four vector potential. We showed that they are related through this equation. I promised that I would show you the proof that this operator is Lorentz invariant, so let's get that out of the way first. But before we do that, I just want to remind you of some things we learned in the course of this series. First of all, let's recall that every vector is always associated with some basis. The whole object is invariant under any transformation, Lorentz or otherwise. So, if we take the four vector potential in Cartesian coordinates, it must be equal to the same four vector in any other coordinates. If we are only talking about the Lorentz transformations, the basis will always be independent of the spacetime coordinates. In the Cartesian coordinates, these bases are just the unit vectors along their respective axes. In the moving frame along the x direction, the bases will look like this. And they transform just like the position vector, since they are position vectors with unit length. Inserting these here, and combining terms with the same bases, we get the result obtained in the previous video. Ok, now we want to apply the Lorentz operator to the four vector potential and show that the whole expression is identical to the one in the moving frame. Let's recall how to do this. First, we express the vector coordinates in terms of the primed coordinates and then apply the chain rule to write the derivatives in terms of the primed coordinates. To work out the second derivatives, just apply the same procedure as on the previous page, but instead of differentiating a, we differentiate this expression with respect to x and this guy with respect to t. Now take the difference and work out the right hand side. You will find that all these terms will cancel out. So the Lorentz operator is indeed Lorentz invariant. Now I want to show you guys how we can write this equation in terms of a contravariant tensor. The goal of this mini-series is electromagnetism in general relativity, which is all about tensors, so it's natural to look for a representation of Maxwell's equations in terms of a tensor. Let us define an antisymmetric tensor F like this, where eta is the flat spacetime metric. I will show you that this part of this equation can be written as a four divergence of F. But first, let us see what each of the elements of f mean. Let's start with fi0. Because f is antisymmetric, its diagonal elements are all zero, so i can only be one of the three spatial components. But this is nothing but the ith component of the electric field. How about fij? If you recall the definition of a curl in Cartesian coordinates, you will find it is just that, a curl of a. For instance, if i equals to y and j equals to x, we'll get that fyx is the z component of b. You can easily work out all the other elements. This is called the electromagnetic tensor. Ok, what about the divergence of f, which has one free index? Let's start with nu equals to zero. Just plug in the tensor elements, remembering that they go from zero to three, and you'll get the divergence of e. What about nu equals to 1, 2, and 3? I'll give you a moment to work it out. Is this what you got? Excellent. So, the divergence of f gives rise to two of the four Maxwell's equations. The other two Maxwell's equations are contained within this relation, where f with lower indices is the contracted electromagnetic tensor. All indices here are free. You might be saying, hang on, don't we have too many equations here? After all, the two Maxwell's equations we're missing comprise of only six equations. You're right, there are too many equations here, but some of them repeat and others give us trivial statements. Here's what I mean. Take gamma equals to zero, alpha equals to zero, and beta equals to one. Since f is antisymmetric, these two terms cancel, and f0,0 zero, zero is just zero. So, this statement, while true, tells us absolutely nothing. It's equivalent to saying 2 equals to 2. Let's try the combination gamma equals to 0, alpha equals to 1, and beta equals to 2. What you'll get is this, which is nothing but the z component of this Maxwell's equation. Ok, let's do one more. Take gamma equals to 1, alpha equals to 2, and beta equals to 3. 
This combination will yield this equation, which is just this Maxwell equation. All other combinations will give you either one of these two Maxwell's equations or a trivial statement. So there we have it, Maxwell's equations in tensor form. In the next video, we'll derive the energy momentum tensor for the electromagnetic fields. See you all there. You